And in the, ne in the end of Venice, this current building became a part of the financial ministry. Why? Why this current building? Because this building has a large uh, basement system. A large ba basement system, and it is really good if you want to save some money. For example, if the whole building uh, uh, fire goes through the building, then the basement money is saved, the documents are saved. It has a great basement system. And after this, when it was a part of the financial ministry, it became a part in the thirties as the interior ministry. What does it mean? It means that this headquarters of interior ministry uh, had a great chance to build a bunker down there. Down there below, uh, they had a chance to build a bunker. And this bunker was a great of system if a war will start. After that, uh, the KGB also used this bunker. It is a different selection of this um, basement system. But you will see the prison bunker. <coughs> uh, and then, in the year of 1940, the 17th June, uh, that was occupied uh, by the Soviet Union. It means that we were in the interest part of the Soviet Union. Not in the Nazi Germany, because Europe was divided by two uh, these totalitarian uh, authorities, uh, Joseph Stalin and Adolf Hitler, divided between them. And uh, we had uh, this uh, border main head, uh, Karl Ludwig Bolstein, and he committed suicide after the occupation of Latvia, here in this building. Uh, he said uh, the first letter uh, was for his mother. A mother, I couldn't do, sorry mother, I could not do it differently. And the second letter uh, was written, we Latvians have built a beautiful and strong country. Foreign nation wants us to destroy it. I cannot participate in this. And he committed suicide, shooting a bullet in his head. And with all of this, uh, started the Soviet occupation period. The KGB came in his, this building in 1914, uh, the autumn, uh, at, as an anniversary present for the October Revolution, at the 7th of November. From the old calendar, it will be 25th October, the new calendar, the 7th of November. Yes. And then, 1941, 22 of June, uh, Latvia, um, Soviet Union is attacked by the Nazi Germany. And what does it mean? It means the Soviets are out. And then in 1944, they came back. In Riga, for example, 1944, then uh, mid of October, they came in. And then in 1991, again out. Yes. Occupation for, for, for 50 years. 50 year occupation period. And the next thing I want to mention is that if you're interested, interested more in this occupation period, then I would suggest you visit the Occupation Museum of Latvia. That is in the center of all freedom. Maybe you have some questions. There is. Maybe more questions about the artistic side of this building or KGB itself or okay. I hope that there will be questions, so let's go for the first thing And uh, you need to see that there is a system like this all around uh, this corridor. All, all around this corridor there is this system you can see all around. It is a benefit from the Soviet Union, the 20s, 30s, we could say. How did this system work? If, for example, if a guard would be attacked by a prisoner, the inmate, then he could uh, press his back on this wooden panel and alarm starts working and the guard uh, comes to uh, save him, to help him. Yeah, that's why most of people, these live licenses, uh, they say that uh, they had this feeling that uh, it is strange. I attacked him, nobody was nearby, nobody. And there, uh, ten, five, five, a lot of guards are coming to save him. 
uh, the guard who attacked uh, who he attacked yes so we can see it is a system all around the prison so we can have one more here. <laughs> because we don't have heat, yeah. 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 we have heat only when we can start to So I hope everyone are inside. And the next thing uh, we need to understand is that um, there are two gates. Why there was a need for two gates? Mainly because when the first gate opens, the second are closed. Why is it needed? So that uh, the people from the street could not see what is happening here in this yard. What is happening in this yard? So that they could not see. And uh, you can see the second gates over there. They were they needed to be pulled like this so that they could be closed. Yeah. So second gates opens only when the first ones are closed. Interesting story. And then, for example, a cattle with vehicle with uh, these forest brothers comes in, and these potential prisoners, political ones, oh, I wanted to ask you a question. What kind of prisoners could be in prison here in this type of prison? How do you think? What kind of prisoners? Political, but what kind of political prisoners? For what, for example? Those who want independence. Yes, who wanted independence, a part of this in independent structure. It means a part of these organizations and so on. Uh, for example, people who read uh, literature that is forbidden. People Bible. who did uh, Bible also, religion in the Soviet Union was forbidden. And if someone caught it, that he has doing it and so on. So, next, next thing we need to understand, the imprisoned person comes in. Some people uh, remember that in the guard who was standing in front of him, of him had this knife in the mouth. Why there's a need for a knife in the mouth? So that the person would be scared and well uh, hidden uh, things could be, uh, uh, so that he could take out all the good, uh, well hidden things, yeah. And all of the things, I would like to ask you, why did they take away from your shoelaces and buttons, metal, for example? Why would they take out the shoelaces and buttons from you? Great. All the items are, that are not needed for you can be used as um, weapon. For example, old buttons, they were <coughs> from metal, and when you scratch them near the wall, you, for example, can... Uh, commit suicide or attack a car. All your items that were not needed for you at the moment were put in this type of cabinet. My next question would be, uh, why did they write down your name uh, in front of you? How do you think? So that you could think, if you will, somehow uh, get away from this building. It was uh, <clears throat> needed so that the people could think that maybe if I will give some information about others, my colleagues and so on, or if I will collaborate with this system, because even in the prison cells there were so-called fake prisoners. Fake prisoners who collaborated with the system, uh, they could not survive like this anymore, and they s you, you will see the horrible conditions of, for example, prison cell, and you will see that one person always collaborated with the system. It means that between the prisoners inside the prison cell, there was with this one person who mm, got information about others and gave it to the interrogator. If it was needed, as always. Uh, most of communication was internal. What does it mean if the communication is internal? It means that a current guard has a current line. For example, registration, the person who registrated the people, if he was in need, 
he could call his main, uh, not leader, but the main person of the registration, for example, process, if there was a need. Of course, higher ranking KGB uh, guards had, for example, no guards, but the main leaders of the KGB had this telephone with the current line to Kremlin, Moscow. What does it mean? It means that if there was a need, they could call Moscow and Kremlin. For example, uh, main leaders even in this building had the current <coughs> telephone. Uh, they have a symbol of Soviet Union over there. Yeah. And uh, here you can see button. Of course, this kind of button to call guards was not displayed on the desk. Probably it was hidden somewhere. It is just to show you how that the, they had a lot of these buttons if there was a need. Just as the button wooden panel system. Here, if you need to call somebody, you can press the buttons and call the person you need. The next question I would like to ask you uh, would be, which of these photos are older and which are younger? Not people in the photos, but uh, photos themselves. How do you think which are older, which are younger? Feel free to ask. <laughs> Not that, but... Uh, uh, which are older and which are younger? Uh, older. older, and you think these are younger? Mm, yeah. Vice versa. These are older, and those are younger. As I mentioned before in the lobby, the country they occupied had a free market system. What does it mean? It means that a lot of resources <coughs> from all kinds of uh, countries, for example, Germany, uh, Finland, and so on, could be bought. It means that Financially, they occupied a great uh, country. So there you can see the Soviet Union, its economy after World War II. And with this type of economy, you can see that the uh, paper quality is bad, photo cameras quality is bad. But here you can see a great, uh, even this uh, uh, camera, uh, you can see this photo quality great. As you can see, here is the country they occupied, here is the country they bought, like this. Now, a thing that you need to understand, when you are fully undressed, fully undressed, so that they could understand, you have some uh, things you don't need, for example, with two, you can commit suicide, they uh, wanted you to sign all these surveys. And there were people who said, uh, I cannot fulfill this survey, I'm fully naked, give me some clothing, because I cannot, and of course, guards gave some clothing. But mostly, people went to these prison cells with the things they had on them, for example, from home, from job, or so on. If you were extremely dangerous political prisoner, they could uh, take you away from your job, or university, for example, by asking the teacher to call the current person, for example, or the main leader of, for example, of, I don't know, um, of factory, for example, the main person, to call the current uh, working the person or the current the student. And in this type of situation, you understand you're highly dangerous for the Soviet Union if, it, if the KGB comes uh, for you. And secondly, if you are not so highly dangerous, then there could be a knock at your door at night, and in this kind of situation, they uh, wanted you to dress and come with them. And as I uh, said before, that was the registration process, mostly. Maybe you have... Ah, also there is television. Why television? In the year of 1992, uh, Latvian mm -hmm. police came here. KGB stopped working in the year of 1991, the 24th of August. And uh, this year, uh, after one year, 1992, Latvian police came here. Uh, here. Why did they came to come here? They came here because uh, this was a place with uh, infrastructure from the Soviet period. Because 
most of these post-Soviet countries, they were in a bad condition economically. It means you don't have enough financial resources to build a new prison or headquarters for the prison. It means they need to use the same uh, what was used before, the infrastructure of the Soviet Union. That's why there is television as a symbol of period of this uh, Latvian police. The Latvian police was here till 2007. 2007, and this current museum is from 2014. And the imprisoned person fulfilled, as I mentioned before, surveys and fulfilled everything and, yeah, as always, surveys. Maybe you have some questions. I have a question. Yes. This emergency buttons, is there any control room that they know where is the yes, button? Yes, in press? higher floors there are uh, these emergency <laughs> rooms. Excuse me that we cannot go to the higher rooms uh, upstairs because it is the state property. Yes. Okay, maybe you have some more questions. Yeah, they had this connection system. I have even seen in life. Yes, maybe you have some more questions. If not, then let's go for the own to the interrogation room. You can sit down. <laughs> You're welcome to sit down. Okay, everyone. <laughs> so, next thing we need to uh, divide two types of um, interrogation processes. What does it mean? It means that before the death of Stalin, um, all the interrogations were physical. It means the person was beaten up with the chair, with fists, and so on. Uh, it means even that, for example, pregnant woman could be beaten, and the infant that came out was fully blue. Even almost dead. And uh, they could do with you anything. They could uh, uh, beat you, as I mentioned, with a chair, for example, fingers in doors, and so on. Uh, most of the people went back to their prison cells only with blood stains all around. Yeah. So you can imagine why, what kind of interrogation it was. And the next thing, uh, even in this period, people have psychological methods. It means that the guard was standing here, was sitting you know, in front of the imprisoned person and saying nothing, and just uh, showing the photos of the relatives. And just taking a knife and cutting out eyes, one after other. And the imprisoned person, of course, he's scared and he says, okay, I will sign the paper. Why there was this need, a signature for this paper? Uh, this paper, uh, on this paper it was written that you are a political criminal for the Soviet Union, and the next uh, step from this building would be to the labor camp means uh, to the gulag, all the Soviet Russia was full with the gulag, and they needed these uh, so-called slaves for this gulag system. And, um, yeah, so when a person signed the paper, uh, he was sentenced to the gulag. Of course, there were situations when the name and surname uh, was uh, the same, but the person was different, and he was fully beaten up, and in that situation, KGB said, you're the wrong person we were seeking for. Please sign this paper that you have never been here. And he signed the paper that he never been here and went out of here. But he could not tell anyone that he has been here. In that kind of situation, he could come back. But all the people who were the right prisoners didn't went out of here like that. They went to Gulag. If you survive Gulag, it is your freedom. Yes. The next thing we need to understand that after Stalin's death, I would say even Beria's death in 1953, the 23rd of December, uh, I would say the year of 54, 1954, that um, these methods became more psychological. One of these methods could be the good and the bad guard. What does it mean? It means that the guard is asking you, for example, um, 
uh, no, not asking, but uh, talking with you and saying uh, you will be free, everything will be okay, your family and so on. And the next one, the bad guard, so-called bad guard, would say you will never get out of here if you won't say anything, you will die in here and so on. So that they could get information. Why there was a need for this signature? Soviet Union wanted to approve uh, that they are legitimate. Uh, nation that have they have this legitimate stru structure. It is the first one. The second one, it is a great heritage to approve that the person is really a political prisoner, has been, and so on. They had these documents that they wanted to show that they are a legal state. But as you can see, the legalness is only on a paper, mostly. So. Uh, maybe you have some questions about the interrogation and so on. You said that if they survive the gulag, they can, they can be, free. be free, but how long, for what time? Uh, the time they had left, the time of life they had left, yes. And if they spoke uh, something that was still not neglecting, not so good for the Soviet Union, they could come back here and go through all of this again. Maybe you have some more questions. I have a question about those mirrors. Ah, it is the two-sided mirror. It was inserted here in the 70s, 80s. This uh, current uh, room was milled in, uh, made in 70s, 80s. Uh, most of the interrogation processes, as I mentioned before, were at the fourth and fifth floor, for example. This current was inserted in 70s, 80s, made. As you can see, the ceilings, the yellow ones, are the original from the uh, Soviet period, and these ceilings are from the Latvian police. And also you can see that in the Soviet Union over there, newspapers were made as uh, wallpapers. And this wallpaper is from the period of Latvian police. Yes. Did the Latvian police use this room? Probably they used it. Yes, of course, that's why the, it is uh, remade, it. yes to interrogate the people, but not uh, like in the KGB. So, the next question, if you do not have any questions, I would like to ask, where did the prisoner sit and where did the interrogator sit? How do you think? Uh, prisoner, uh, the the Could you please sit down over there? <laughs> uh, yes, it is true because um, they can see your facial expressions and all of the rest. Because they knew the person who was sitting here, he had studied all kinds of schools and the KGB knew him really good, but the person who was sitting here, that's why there was a need for the interrogation to see the facial expression and all the rest of the things. So, maybe some of you had heard the period of Cuba crisis. Maybe someone? Yes, probably. And now let's imagine that it is the Khrushchev's period, the year of 60s, and a psychological, psychology, yes, psychological uh, <coughs> method. For lo how long you have served for America? Again? Yes. For how long you have served for America? Um. <laughs> so, you have served for America, yes? No. You have. No. You are dangerous for the Soviet Union. No, no, I, I don't. You're an uh, American spy. I know. You are. No. But you will be. Probably, you, <laughs> if you are not, then you will be an uh, American spy because you are here. And why you are here? Because you are a spy. No. <laughs> You are, because you are here, and if you are here, you are a spy. And with all kinds of these methods, they try to get information out of the people and the signature. So, yes, maybe you have some questions. If not, now you will have free time, two, two to three minutes to walk around and look the prison cells. Yeah. So, you can take photos and as always, ask questions if you do not understand something or so on. Yes? Uh, you know, the streets, 
what that we talk about, uh, it was mostly with blood stains. It means blood, facilities, uh, the people are sweet, sweating, sweat, sweat itself. And uh, that there is one person talking about everyone to the interrogator who has collaborated internal and to understand external. There was always these eyes looking at you over here. Always eyes looking at you. For example, people remember that there was a red carpet. Why there was a need for red carpet coverage? Yes, blood stains, and secondly, four feet. So that if the person comes nearby, you cannot hear him, and so. Of course, the day you could play chess and so on, you could walk around with 30 people, unimaginable. And to understand more, 24 7 like, like, like this. 24 7. And if you covered your eyes, then the, um, this guard. He could uh, shout on you, uh, remove your hands from your eyes. All the time, looking, all the time, in conditions like this, from one week till six months. Homeschool. People were kept here from one week till six months. Yeah. Maybe you have some questions. If not, then we can go further on to the walking area. Please, all of Everyone, please, in a circle. Everyone in a circle. Everyone in a circle. Uh, closer, closer. And uh, hands before, behind your back. And your face uh, in front of your neighbor's back. Uh, yes, like this. Like this, great, yeah, and yes, like this. And now, close together, everyone, closer. And now, head lower down, no talking, and walking like this mm. for one minute. But no talking, no smiling, only walking like this. You can walk. Head down. No looking up. No Feelings did you have when you were in a circle like this? What kind of feelings? 
similarity. Yeah. And it is the feeling most of imprisoned people have. Um, but thanks to, for example, some of you probably know that religion in the Soviet Union was forbidden. But uh, Dieter, the church, continued working. It continued to work, and on Sundays, we go to the church, and some of the people have the feeling that maybe someday they will be free. Maybe some pigeons or butterflies, as you can see, the uh, conditions were accumulating till the people signed the paper. Okay? Do you have some questions? And of course, there were people who left some messages. These people were not going to be able to work it for too long. Maybe you have some questions. What was this room for? This room? This was walking area. Do you, you walked like this? And it, it was the walking for them. They walk like this in this type of uh, walking area. Are they walking every day? Uh, 20 minutes a day. Only once a day. Once a day, 20 minutes like this, like you walk. Not like now. They didn't talk. And, so. and imagine 30, 40 degrees in a prison cell and you're out in minus 20 degrees Celsius. It is horrible. And for example, this wall divided uh, two types of these walking areas so that in one uh, time they could, um, from one cell in one, another in another. Because no information could be spread around. Because mostly, for, for example, uh, family villages were also divided uh, through the cameras and so on, these present cells. Okay, do you have any questions? Yeah. Can family visit? Excuse me? Can family enter the visit? No, no, no visitors, no. No visitors couldn't come to this building, no one. Okay, yes? Was it a single person at a time or was it a group? A group, like this. Okay. Just like you walked it like this. <laughs> The people walked it well, from one cell like this. Okay. That's why I made this circle, you to walk. Okay, if no more questions, then let's go to the kitchen. Please follow me. <coughs> They said no, they didn't have enough time for that type of thing. Yeah. So, uh, the food was made by the community. And what was it? It means that all the food came from these two pots. And the things were just thrown in. For example, root and vegetables, protein. Vegetables are kinds of meat and so on. Not till the end peeled, not till the end washed, everything just uh, thrown inside, made mostly <coughs> as a soup, 
and given to the imprisoned people three times a day. Even drinking water came from here. As I mentioned, everything. Uh, talking about the drinking water, in the morning it was like tea, from brownness, not from the taste. In the evening it was coffee, brown. Because these pots were never clean. They were using them until the end. And all these prison ladies were transferred here, as always, not knowing anything. As you can see, you cannot see where you are. They didn't know where they are. That's the most, for example, uh, interviews, uh, they don't, didn't know where they are. Most of the people didn't know where they are. The system was built so, so that you do not know where you are. Yes, as always, not knowing anything. Signature and the way to the Google. You haven't been here, and so on. So, maybe some questions. If not, then let's go uh, further on to the medical lesson uh, where we have an exhibition of the So, in 1941, the 22nd of June, uh, Soviet Union was attacked by Nazi Germany. What does it mean? It means that uh, the KGB and the Soviet system itself needs to play the way to the Soviet Union. In the 1st of July, 1941, um, this uh, Nazi Germany comes in Riga. Uh, headquarters will be used as a part of the Nazi Germany's army, but here, as a scientist, I would say, not scientist, but a teacher from the Riga's first gymnasium, uh, Julius Brach, went through the documents that were left out the archive and so on. He photographed most of the photographies that we have left all around, you probably saw, for example, in the prison cell and so on. Uh, he had a really big, uh, this archive of what had happened here. And then, when uh, this was all collected, all this archive, uh, it was really useful for the propaganda of Nazi Germany. As you can see, propaganda against the Jewish people and uh, the communists. Yeah. And then, in 1944, when Soviets pushed Nazi Germany back, they understood that they don't have enough time anymore, and they fled away to Liepaja. Liepaja, and you can see the Liepaja Cemetery. Why Liepaja Cemetery? Because they dug, dug in a big pit all the documents they had in these type of metal boxes. They, in uh, three boxes like this, all they are hired. And um, why did they, didn't they take with them? Because if you have seen a refugee boat, it is always uh, just full. The refugees' boats are full, and it, it is not even enough space for people worth some kind of documents, I would say. That's why they dug up in Aleppo uh, Cemetery. In 1972, two boxes like this were found. KGB took them away, of course. And in 1996, this box was found, mystically, really. And this archive is in the Latvian War Museum. And this metal box is the original one, the original one that was found. Maybe you have some questions about the period of Nazi Germany. If not, then I have a question for you. Maybe some of you do not want to visit the execution chamber. Okay, then please follow me and as always, stay together. <coughs> Thank you. 
Is it a single person shooting? Uh, or a group of people? Uh, at the same a single time? person. Also. And then I'd say intimidation? Uh, you think uh, so intimidation that. Uh, scared. scared, yes. Yes, scared intimidation. Person. Intimidation, as you mentioned before, yes. Yes, <laughs> this is the intimidation. And here you can see the uh, normal, this medium uh, level shooting. Of course, it's not normal, but uh, middle, this middle uh, shooting. And as you can see, there's a, there are a lot of bullets. And there, if a person grumbled or something like that, he could be shot a second time in the head. 188 people were shot here in one night. Why did this all happen? Uh, in the night from 28th to 29th of June, they understood that they won't have enough resources to take the imprisoned political prisoners with them. That's why they figured out that with one uh, sign signature, Simeon Schustens, they will have enough resources, not enough resources, but uh, they will kill all the imprisoned people so that they could, uh, wouldn't need to take them with them to the Soviet Union because they didn't have enough vehicles even communists took bicycles to run to flee away to the Soviet Union and so on. It means that we need to uh, perish these political prisoners and they perish them by killing all of them. Even in Riga, Riga Central Prison most of these political prisoners were killed. And the cattle vehicle that came in here for the corpses, the dead people body, bodies, uh, on this vehicle was written Malakho. In Russian it means milk. Milk. And then these corpses were put in this type of vehicle. But then, when the vehicle went out, people from the street saw that there was a liquid coming out of the vehicle. And they understood that it is not milk, it is blood. Blood, this blood stains going to the nearest forest nearby. Bitter near the school next to the airport. 
uh, Balthazars and so on. Nearest forests all around Riga. Mass graves with people, these political prisoners, because they could not take them with them. With them. Then, to hide all of this, there, wall, this, and wallpaper. And there was a cash register, and the lady here standing and giving for the uh, KGB guards the things they could not get in any other shop. It means, for example, jeans, plastic bags, plastic, just regular bags, that were not uh, available in the Soviets uh, in that period. For example, the Beatles' vinyl, and so on. From lying about milk, till some people are more equal than others. This was the part of the Soviet system. I hope that you understood what was it like to live in the Soviet Union, how people were afraid, and so on. Thank you. And I hope that you will enjoy the freedom that God gives you. I'd say so. <laughs> yes, the freedom. Thank you for your attention. Yes. So, now you are free. And if you have some questions, then you're welcome to us. Yes. But then, not for now, you Thank you for the Yes, I have. These are the so I will sit down.